Hi, and welcome to our program from Embryo to Chick, a cooperative virtual learning experience. My name is Jeanette Berenger, and I'm the Senior Program Manager for the Livestock Conservancy, a national nonprofit dedicated to the conservation of rare livestock and poultry breeds. Today's topic is warming the eggs, where we will explore how to choose and set eggs for hatching, and look at two different types of incubators and their basic operation. We will also see the hazards of shipping eggs and the importance of keeping records for what is happening in the incubators. So sit back and let's get started. One of the greatest keys to success in incubating is to make sure you're starting out with good eggs to begin with. So you want to make sure they're very fresh. Uh, these eggs, for instance, are only a week old. And also you want very clean eggs. Uh, no poop on them. Uh, if an egg breaks in the nest, you don't want them to be covered with broken egg. You also want them to be the right shape of an egg. You don't want them short and fat, kind of like a golf ball. And you don't want them long and skinny with these really pointy ends. You want them to look basically like an egg, an ovoid. Uh, one end is a little bit smaller and skinnier than the other. You've got the pointy end. Um, and the rounded end, here's a good one. So, um, make sure you start out with the good stuff before you even put them in the incubator. So these are all very clean, uh, they're very fresh, and uh, let's go to the incubator. This is a tabletop incubator and we're going to be using this to incubate some eggs from Dominique chickens and from crab core chickens. Uh, this is a really practical kind of incubator, uh, good for home use, and uh, this is the first time I've tried out this model so I'm hoping it's going to work out really well. When you're gathering eggs for incubation, you want to make sure that first they're very, very clean. If you have really dirty eggs, that's a bad thing in the incubator because there's bacteria on them and uh, that could cause the eggs to explode <coughs> inside. And that's very messy and nasty. I wanted to mention a little bit about egg positioning for both storage and for incubation. Most folks incubate eggs with the pointy side down. This is to allow the air cell to form on the wider end of the egg because this is where the chick is going to take its first breath and begin to break out of the egg. So we're going to go ahead and put these guys in the incubator. This model actually has all the bells and whistles. It's got an automatic turner and it's got automatic humidity, which is going to make my life a lot easier. And we're going to put all the eggs in so that they're pointy side down. And this incubator is going to handle about 48 eggs. And we'll just load it up and see what happens. Okay, well I've finished loading the eggs in. We have 30 Dominique eggs and we've got nine Crepcor eggs in here. And uh, this unit is pretty automated, so I don't have to be around all the time to take care of the eggs. Uh, because I work, that is very convenient for me because I'm not home all the time. Uh, the incubator is going to bring the eggs up to a temperature of 99.7. And uh, this is an automatic uh, humidity pump, which pulls water from this jug here. And it's going to maintain a humidity of about 45 to 46% in here. And uh, it's a really nice automated unit. And uh, typical for um, use in a regular household, if you've got a small flock and you want to hatch a few eggs, that would uh, this would be a great unit for it. Uh, the other type of incubator we're going to look at is a cabinet incubator, which can incubate a lot more eggs, and it works a little bit different than this. So we're going to go ahead and turn this on and uh, move to the cabinet incubator. Thank you. 
This is called a cabinet incubator. And you can see it has a door in front, and you can see through the uh, door here with the plexiglass. And this is the kind of incubator you'd want to use if you want to hatch a lot of eggs. And inside we have egg trays that fit in here. Each one of them is going to hold 48 eggs and we can fit six of them. So that means that this incubator can hold 288 eggs. That's a lot. Up here we have the tray that's going to help us to create humidity in the incubator. It will fill with water and then to make it even more humid we added what we call wicks which are these little um, paper um, inserts and what it does is lift up some water. It soaks up the water and wicks it up to the, the top and the fan in back blows across the wicks and helps to improve the humidity within the incubator. So every day we have to check and make sure there's plenty of water inside here and that it doesn't dry out. The other really neat thing is it has an automatic turner mechanism. So each of these shelves will rock back and forth a whole bunch of times during the day so that the uh, embryos don't stick to the side of the egg shell. And so this is a really automated cabinet that makes my life very easy when I'm busy and have to go to work and I don't have to worry about coming home and turning the eggs. So um, this is not very practical for small hatches because it uses a lot of energy, but we have over 100 eggs we're going to be hatching, and so this is a really great tool for us to get them hatched and get some chicks. Who says chickens can't fly? This box just arrived from Colorado yesterday from my good friend Tom Whiting, and he has been breeding some crep cores for me. And uh, this box is rested overnight so that the air cells can reform because when they were traveling, they were getting shaken up, and so we want to have good air cells in the eggs. And so now we're going to unpack them and get them ready for the incubator, and let's see if there are any broken ones. It's a really nice box. You know, eggs are fragile, so there's a lot of packing in here. Some nice soft foam to keep them from breaking. And we've got these little kind of honeycomb foam shippers, we call them. You can see here all the eggs are tight. But uh-oh, we've got some broken eggs here. Um, they're a little bit messy in here. Um, it looks like somebody dropped the box on this corner, and so all of these eggs are broken. So unfortunately, we're not going to have all our eggs to incubate, but let's take them out of the foam shippers and see how many we have. Well, we finished unpacking the eggs, and I'm happy to report that we have 102 eggs that survived coming from Colorado. And that's pretty good. That means that only 18 eggs were broken. So now I have the eggs loaded in their incubator trays, and we'll get them ready for the incubator now. We've had our incubator running for a while and now we've got it up to temperature. Our target temperature is going to be 99.5 and we want the humidity somewhere between 45%, uh, maybe a little bit more than that, but we don't want the humidity too high because then that'll keep the air cells from forming on the eggs. So we're going to go ahead and put our eggs in the incubator. the fans blowing in here. Uh, this is a forced air incubator and that means that there's air circulating in here which is a really great thing for the eggs. It helps them to hatch more easily. Uh, with circulating air that means that the temperature is going to be more even within the incubator. So carefully putting these eggs in. water 
reservoir is full of water, so we've got good humidity. And that's it. So now we've put the eggs in the incubator, and the next really important thing we need to start doing is record keeping, you know, the real fun stuff. This is my egg chart, and everything that happens to these eggs over the next 21 days is going to be put down on this chart. Uh, typically chickens take about 21 days to hatch, although depending on the time of year, sometimes it can take a little bit less or a little bit more, and also the temperature that they're incubated at, if the incubator runs a little bit hot, sometimes they'll hatch out a little bit earlier. So it's really important to kind of chart what's happening in this incubator the entire time the eggs are in here. So my chart has a number of things. First, it has the number of eggs that is going to be incubated. In this case, it's 102. And the breed, uh, these are Crevcores. And how long the eggs have been resting or sitting until they get put in the incubator. And in this case, the oldest eggs in this batch are 10 days old. And then we're going to start our daily monitoring of the incubator. So you're going to start with the date, uh, the time of day, the temperature, the humidity, and how many turns the incubator has made. And then you're going to do that all over again in the evening and record the same thing. I also have a little note section here so that if anything unusual has happened that maybe, you know, might cause a problem with the eggs, like if a big thunderstorm rolls through and the electricity goes out for an hour, make sure that you put that in your notes. Or maybe you forgot to close a window and the room got really, really hot one day. Uh, whatever the case, make sure that you keep notes because in the end, if you have some eggs that haven't hatched, you might be able to trace the reason why by going back to your notes and seeing something might have gone on to cause a problem. So note keeping is really, really important. Not the most glamorous thing to do, but it will help you be more successful with your hatch. Well, that concludes our first segment on incubation. We hope you've learned a few new things about incubation, that you'll join us for our next segments, which will cover candling, picking the right chicken for your project, the basics needed inside the coop to keep your chickens happy, and getting ready for hatching and taking care of those new chicks. So I hope you'll join us, and thank you again for spending time with us today. This program would not be possible without the support of our sponsors, including Tractor Supply Company and the Manton Foundation. I want to give special thanks to Premier One for providing the Barado Tabletop Incubator and to Hamilton Rare Breeds Foundation for the GQF Cabinet Incubator. For more information on other programs with the Livestock Conservancy and North Carolina Cooperative Extension, please visit our websites. Have a great day, and here's hoping the chicken projects you dream of come true.